Good morning and welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. My name is Gordon Ritchie. I have the great pleasure of being the co-conductor of our church choir, Coriolis. But alas, I'm on my own this morning. My other co-conductors on the other side of the world with her husband. Enjoying uh, some lovely weather in Spain. They're back this week and I wish them a safe journey home. We've missed them. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, multi-generational religious community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free-thinking, spiritual questing individuals joined in common support and action. We welcome diversity, including diversity from beliefs, from divine believers to humanists, from pagans to atheists and agnostics. We believe in the compassion of the human heart, the warmth of community, the pursuit of justice, and the search for meaning in our lives. We gather with gratitude this morning on traditional Cree lands that are now part of Treaty 6, shared by many nations. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another, good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to all our children. Our opening words this morning are by Kathleen McTeague. We come together this morning to remind one another to rest for a moment on the forming edges of our lives, to resist the headlong tumble into the next moment until we claim for ourselves awareness and gratitude, taking the time to look into one another's faces and see their communion, the reflection of our own eyes. This house of laughter and silence Memory and hope is hallowed by our presence together. Our theme this morning is the healing power of music. And so I give you these words by Marnie Singer. The chalice is the container, the space where the musicians and the listeners gather. The oil is the fuel the hours of practice, and the life experiences of everyone in this room. The wick is the instrument and vocal cords through which the music will flow. And the flame, the flame is the music which is created as if by magic. When the instruments are lifted, the breath is inhaled and the downbeat is nodded. May this flame ignite the music within all of us. Playlists of the Spirit by Connie Simon. Doe, a deer, a female deer. Many of us instantly recognize that as the first line of the song, Do, Re, Mi, from The Sound of Music. You might even be able to picture Julie Andrews, no, or um, Maria, telling the Vaughn children that these notes are the tools we use to build a song. Once you have the notes in your head, you can sing a million different tunes by mixing them up. After which, of course, she bursts into song. And within three minutes, they're all harmonizing and parading through the streets and waterways of Salzburg, having a good old time. I know it's corny, but it's true. Think of all the music you know. Every song you've ever sung or danced to or heard on the radio, every single one of them is a different arrangement of the same notes. Using the power of imagination, composers have mixed these notes in a gazillion different ways to express a multitude of emotions. No matter how I'm feeling, happy or sad, sick or well, fragile or unbreakable, loved or unloved, I turn to music. Music is my solace and my comfort. The one thing that's always with me. I feel its vibration deep in my soul. It's my spiritual practice. Music can calm me, excite me, and sometimes its beauty even moves me to tears. 
I have playlists for driving, house cleaning, celebrating, morning, just some for just being. From Bach to James Brown, there's an arrangement of those same notes for every occasion in my life, including the hard times. Music tells the story of my life. I recently went through a rough patch. I was recovering from an accident and was still trying to keep up with school and my other responsibilities. I felt out of control and lost. Once again, music saved me. I played quiet, soothing music when it hurt to move. I sang inspirational gospel music for encouragement when I began to stretch my sore limbs. Today, I listen to thumping hip-hop as I work my muscles back into shape. I'm forever grateful for my music, those do-re-mis that fill my soul and provide the playlist for my life. May we each be blessed by the presence and power of music in our lives. The next reading is adapted from two sources, one an article called Music is Medicine and the other a website called Virtues for Life. Music has long been recognized as an effective form of therapy to provide an outlet for emotions, but the notion of using song, sound, and frequencies and rhythm to treat physical ailments is a relatively new domain. A wealth of new studies is touting the benefits of music on mental and physical health. For example, in a review of 400 studies, researchers found that music improves the body's immune system function and reduces stress. Listening to music was also found to be more effective than prescription drugs in reducing anxiety before surgery. Researchers have also found that listening to and playing music increased the body's production of antibodies and natural killer cells, the cells that attack invading viruses and boost the immune system's effectiveness. Music also reduces levels of the stress hormone cortisol. One recent study on the link between music and stress found that music can help soothe pediatric emergency room patients. University of Alberta researchers found that children who listened to relaxing music while getting an IV inserted reported less pain and some demonstrated less distress compared with patients who did not listen to music. In the music listening group, more than two-thirds of the healthcare providers reported that the IVs were very easy to administer, compared to only 38% of providers treating the group that did not listen to music. Music can help adult patients, too. Researchers in Singapore found that patients in palliative care who took part in in live music therapy sessions reported relief from persistent pain. Music therapists work closely with patients to individually tailor the intervention, and patients took part in singing, instrument playing, lyric discussion, and even songwriting as they worked toward accepting an illness or weighed end-of-life issues. Plato wrote that rhythm and harmony permeate the inner part of the soul more than anything else, affecting it most strongly and bringing it grace. When we listen to music we love, that certain melody resonates deep in our soul and can provide a space in time where all problems disappear. Songs can stir up past love affairs and wonderful and sad memories. No other form of creativity has the lasting power of music because it speaks to us in so many different ways, healing us, inspiring us, moving us, and uniting us. Music can make us shout, dance with abandon, and sing like stars. It can make us cry and fill us with joy. We can rely on music over and over again to take us down memory lane, fuel our creativity, and ease our pain. As the French poet Victor Hugo said, music expresses that which cannot be said and on which it is impossible to be silent. Sing Two Songs and Call Me in the Morning by Sari Harar. Just after she was diagnosed with lymphatic cancer, Maria Logis was possessed of a quirky desire. 
Every time I prayed, a voice inside me urged me to sing, says Logis, a former human resources executive at Con Edison, New York City's electric company. I had never sung before. It was baffling. Encouraged by her sister, Logis went looking for a singing teacher, but ended up with a music therapist. Instead of asking her to study scales and belt out show tunes, the therapist encouraged her to improvise and give voice to her deepest feelings. I sang about being afraid of the doctors and of treatment, she says. Lyrics about the despair, sadness, and silence of my life poured out of me. Music made it possible for me to face my fear and anguish. Until recently, most music therapists have worked almost exclusively with special groups, kids with disabilities, for example, or the elderly. Early research suggests the practice may ease depression and help control blood pressure. Now a tiny but growing group is offering vocal therapy to all adults. Nothing accesses the inner world of feelings, sensations, memories, and associations as directly as music does, says Diane Austin, adjunct associate professor of music therapy at New York University and executive director of the Music Psychotherapy Center in New York. The voice is like a bridge from your heart to your head. Singing freely releases what's locked up in your body, A pilot study published in the British Journal of Nursing found that singing therapy could greatly reduce the anxiety and depression that patients can experience following a major surgery. The effect was strong enough that the authors suggested doctors prescribe therapy before trying antidepressants. In a session, Austin might start with a deep, slow breathing, and then suggest that you turn each exhalation into a wordless sound or that you improvise a melody while free associating words. The exercises take surprising and revealing turns, playful, silly, angry. Your voice doesn't lie, she says. You can have all sorts of self-knowledge, but through deep breathing and using your voice, you can get closer to what's really going on in you. As for Logis, her cancer went into remission right before she was scheduled for chemotherapy. But lifting her voice transformed other aspects of her life. A year after her diagnosis, she rented an upright piano and performed songs based on her experience for friends crammed into her apartment. She said, everyone wept and cheered. During the month of January, our minister, Brian Kiley, will be looking at Buddhism. And so this morning, I thought I would take a moment to talk about music and Buddhism. Music gives us the capacity to express the deepest feelings of the human soul, whether through holy hymns, or serene chants of praise. It is capable of lifting our minds to an almost sublime state, and as such is regarded as having an important role in the promotion of religious teachings. The teachings of the Buddha mention music on many occasions. In the Amartya Sutra, it is written that heavenly singing and chanting is heard all day and all night, as mandara flowers softly rain down from the heavens. All kinds of birds produce beautiful and harmonious music throughout the day and night. Upon the blowing of a gentle breeze, the movements of jewel trees bring about a kind of wondrous music, as if thousands of gentle tunes are being played together in harmony. Upon hearing these melodious sounds, those present naturally become mindful of the Buddha, mindful of the Dharma, mindful of the Sangha. In accordance, all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas are very skilled at utilizing music to spread the Dharma and guide sentient beings to enlightenment, which helps to purify the heart. 
and so they would chant. May all blessings be yours. May all gods protect you by the power of all Buddhas. May all happiness be yours. May all blessings be yours. All gods protect you. By the power of all dharmas, may all happiness be yours. May all blessings be yours. May all gods protect you. By the power of all sangha, may all happiness be yours. This reading is a collection of responses from choir members at a Unitarian church when asked why they sing. Why they sing by Carrie J. Johnson. Singing is an act of creation, of bringing into the world something that wasn't there before. Singing is a natural expression of my spirit. At the same time, it can be soothing, energizing, crying, laughing, angelic, or down in the dirt blues. It's all good. Singing is energy going out into the world to create even more sympathetic energy. It can change the world. I bet it was someone listening to music that first created the concept of heaven. Singing simply puts a song in my heart that I can share. I sing to create an uplifting atmosphere for myself and for others to dispel the bleak midwinter. I sing for the pure joy of it. I sing for the spine-tingling sensation when you know you and your fellow singers have touched those who listen. Singing brings me joy and energy and makes me dance. I sing because it opens doors, doors inside and out. I sing because it helps me understand the power inside me and how to use it fearlessly or gently. Oh, yes, and uh, it feels mighty fine, too. Things, there are feelings too complex to express in words that can somehow be conveyed through singing. Singing is alive with emotion, and expressing myself that way makes me feel whole. Learning the songs that touch different people's hearts in a way of knowing them better. Singing is channeling your feelings, opening your mouth, And out comes something amazing that that makes other people feel like you do. You're happy, they're happy. You're empowered, they become empowered. I sing because I can and found that the best way for me to express my joy or sorrow, and, and I can sense that people are sending back their own feelings. But it also allows me to step into the emotional shoes of the composer, to step beyond the intellectual empathy of another person and imagine that I really feel what he or she wanted to convey. So even if the lyrics are not something that I would write, I have a deeper understanding of another human being. Why do I sing? Yes, it feeds the soul. It brings me back to a childhood of singing in the car or while doing the dishes with my family. It engrosses me in something beautiful. Music, especially classical music, has been a part of my life since childhood. Our car never had a radio, so we sang as we drove along. I especially love the harmonic chords and the sound that made, the sounds that are made as different vocal lines are woven together into a whole. I started singing in a choir when I was 12. The initial attraction was the glazed donuts that our choir director astutely laid out to get us to early rehearsal on Sunday morning. But then it hit me how much fun it was to to make music 
and it gets more fun and more rewarding every time. I sing because of the joy and the camaraderie it brings into my life. Music expands my world. Because I can. And no one has run screaming from the building yet, even if I don't quite always sing in harmony. (laughs) I sing because I love making music with you use and, and other people I care about. Making connections with the choir brings an even fuller sense of community with friends and other you use. And I love the challenge of making the notes all come together and blend with other voices. Making music together is the ultimate expression of community harmony. With gratitude, We celebrate the gifts shared with wonder and delight we receive. May the melodic offerings continue to touch our hearts and nurture our spirits. Our closing words are by Richard S. Gilbert. By our presence here with one another, hearing the harmonies that is the music of the spheres, May some of the harshness and discord of our human lives be transmuted into music. A new song in our hearts may there be, and a new harmony in our beings, so that we shall return to our several duties with fresh courage and an eagerness and with rejoicing. May it be so. Blessed be.